All right, welcome back, everybody. This is Geeks Are Sexy. I'm Jason LaDuke. This is the, third, the fourth Thursday of the month, and we're back with our second guest, Teresa Moore from Down Syndrome Organization of Southern Nevada. Teresa came to Las Vegas from Utah and left a career in banking, that's how I met you, actually, yes. to become the executive director of Down Syndrome of Southern Nevada. And their mission is to enlighten the public by promoting a positive understanding of Down Syndrome in the community and be a source of support information and education for families and individuals with Down syndrome. They do so much more than just that. But thank you for joining us today, Teresa. Let's start by talking briefly about what Down syndrome is, because I think there's a lot of misconceptions about it. I know I had a lot of misconceptions about it before I met you. So Absolutely, and thanks for having me. Um, Down syndrome is actually the most common genetic disorder. Um, we all have 23 chromosomes, mm -hmm. and when you have Down syndrome, you have an extra chromosome 21. Okay. So what that does is it messes with your balance. And so children that are born with Down syndrome um, have a slower pace that they learn, mm -hmm. and their, their bodies develop at a slower pace. Okay. Um, they're more prone, prone to have heart defects, hearing problems, mm -hmm. speech issues, mm -hmm. and um, just their social issues are a little bit off, but they're just amazing kids and they're just it, wonderful to it work with. It just sounds they need like a little bit of help to, to do the same things that the rest of us do every yep, day, right? Absolutely, and they're just, they're just so pure and so innocent. Yeah. It's like you just want to hug them all. Yeah. yeah. So, so Down Syndrome Organization of Southern Nevada has been around a long time. How did it get started? Where are we at today with things? Okay. Yeah, Down Syndrome Organization of Southern Nevada actually was um, established in 1987. So we've been around for about 33 years. Mm -hmm. It was a group of parents who were here in Southern Nevada, and they got together because their children all had Down Syndrome. Mm -hmm. So they kind of formed this bond and decided to establish a nonprofit organization, mm -hmm. which then became Down Syndrome Organization of Southern Nevada. Mm -hmm. And it's been great because they're able to provide programs and services for the individuals and their families in the Southern Nevada community, and we've just been growing and growing. And that's what I want to emphasize. It's not just about events and raising money and distributing money. You guys actually have a really beautiful house where you have a lot of these programs at. And you have the kids come by and you have an after school program and that kind of thing. And the kids can come by every day after school to do music and art and those kinds of things. Yeah. And you took over not quite a year ago as executive right. director. Right. And you had some very specific goals when you came in. So what were those goals that you had coming in to take over this organization? And what were some of the challenges you faced to meet those goals? Well... It definitely was different than coming from my banking background. Um, but the nice thing with my banking background is I had management experience. Mm -hmm. And so coming into the organization that had been running for 33 years, it's volunteer ran, mm -hmm. had an amazing board, but I came in with a different uh, vision. Mm -hmm. So I was able to look at the organization and look at where they were running as a business. Mm -hmm. And um, I was focused more on getting... Uh, structure mm -hmm. and um, just creating a, a better pathway for things to happen on a more consistent basis. Um, and in doing that, I was able to meet with the community, meet with parents, meet with individuals and find out you know, what is really needed versus what we're offering. And um, it, it's made a huge impact in the organization already, just giving us some structure. Yeah, I think that was, we talked a lot about this a few months mm -hmm. ago, and this was, this was, um, there were a lot of great intentions, but it was really hard to get from vision to, to execution. Absolutely. And, yeah. and I've heard you've done a great job. Well, thank you. Yeah. Turning it's, that around. You know, and I've met some of the most amazing volunteers out mm -hmm. there. We have an amazing community, and everybody wants to help. The thing is, is when somebody says, hey, I want to volunteer, we need to figure out how we can incorporate their expertise into what we need. Mm -hmm. So they might say, I want to volunteer. I may not have something for you today, but please don't walk away. You know, yep. we're open to whatever you're willing to do. And sometimes, you know, your expertise, we can fit a program into that. So, so now that the new structure is in place, now that now that you have this strategy to, to action set up where you can go from those, from idea to execution, what are some of the things you want to do? What are some of the new programs you want DSOSN to be able to offer 
in 2019 and 2020 now that now that some of these structural changes have been made? Yeah, what we're doing is we um, have incorporated um, a mer a parent meetups, which will um, dual dual purpose. It's a playtime for the kids, but it's mm -hmm. also an opportunity for the um, support group for the parents, which is extremely important because once you have a child with Down syndrome, if mm -hmm. you don't know another parent with that, you feel like you're out there on an island. Mm -hmm. So we've got a new parent meetup starting. We've done that years ago, and mm -hmm. the kids have aged out, so now we're starting it up again, which has been great. And we also have one that's bilingual. Okay, um, we have quite a huge Hispanic community, and mm -hmm. you know we definitely don't want to. Leave them out just because we have some language barriers so we're starting one for the Hispanic community so any of you out there with children with um, that speak Spanish or the parents speak Spanish please come and reach out to us to learn more about that we're also incorporating more programs during the day most okay. of our programs were after-school programs mm -hmm. um, but we're looking at maybe yoga in the middle of the day or an art class and mm -hmm. different things like that. Especially in the summertime now that the kids are out of school. Sure. Because they go to regular schools and stuff and you know, we're seeing how we can get them in to, to get things going during the day. Well what a great opportunity for the, the parents who are new to all of this to get some mentoring from the parents who've been doing this for yeah, for you know, know ten or fifteen or twenty years. Yeah, or even three months. Right. You know? So those are all new things you want to do. Let's not forget about some of the great stuff you guys were doing when you came in. Uh, okay. What are some of those programs you guys were running from the kids? And, and if you have a child with Down syndrome or you know someone who has a child with Down syndrome, these are some of the classic programs you've had for the kids, right? Yeah. Um, our classic program that will never go away, in fact, we're looking at expanding it, is music. Um, the kids, absolutely, and I call them kids. Some of them mm -hmm. are 60 and some of them are newborns, but they're all kids, and they love music. So we have a couple of music sessions going on. We're looking at uh, expanding one from zero to three-year-olds. Mm -hmm. um, they come and do music. They come and do art. They... Um, are le learning um, communication skills with each other and just social skills. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, Turo University is amazing. They come in and help us do physical therapy. That's great. And then we will continue to outsource our speech therapy and help subsidize those particular programs with funding that's coming in. Okay, great. Um, now you've got a big event coming up. Your big event for the year is coming. It's not coming up right away, so <laughs> it feels like don't, it. <laughs> don't tune out, though, because it is coming up fast. It'll get yeah. here fast. And tell us about it. Yes, it is actually coming up in 145 days. So, you know, we've been working on it for a few months already, and it is our annual, well, it'll be our 31st annual mm -hmm. Festival of Trees and Lights Gala. Mm -hmm. um, it is definitely one of the must-go-to events of the year, mm -hmm. and it's where we auction off live, well, we do live and silent auction mm -hmm. of Christmas trees, mm -hmm. wreaths, and all the gifts and toys and everything mm -hmm. that go with them. Um, that event will be on November. 23rd at Treasure Island this year. Okay, great. Treasure Island. Yeah, we're so excited to do Treasure Island. We had done... That, that's um, new. So. Yeah, we were had been doing South Point. South Point was amazing and they were really good to us, but we decided it was time for a new venue. Okay. So we're going to try South Point, or I'm sorry, Treasure Island. And so we're excited about that. And there's a number of ways people can be part of this event and help out with this event. In the short term, they can sign up to have a tree, right? They can sign up to design a tree. Right. So they could be tree designers, and um, they can get their own sponsors and their own gifts, mm -hmm. and they're you know just work with the community that surrounds them and donate that tree, and mm -hmm. then we can auction it off. Mm -hmm. um, we're always looking for silent auction items, okay. baskets and gift cards and things mm -hmm. like that that we can combine in a basket or make mm -hmm. it the whole basket. And wreaths, we're looking for wreath designers. Okay, um, we auction off about forty wreaths, mm -hmm. and they're just amazing. People love them because they get to come to this event. They, it's a, it's a dinner, a dance, a gala, and all of that. So they come mm -hmm. to that, and they purchase these items. The money goes to a great cause, and then they have a great holiday piece. It's great. And you also, if you're looking to do a corporate donation, they can come and purchase a table. Yes, they or can they, purchase or they can just come make a donation outright. Absolutely. Right. And Absolutely. so, so. We'll have all this information where you can get in touch with Teresa. But Teresa, tell us how people can get in touch with you, or you can get us in, in touch with me at the company or here at the show, and we'll get you in touch with Teresa if you're interested in the, doing a tree or a buying a table or attending the event. But Teresa, tell everyone how they can reach you, not just for the event, but yeah, in for our organization in general, our number is seven zero two six four eight one nine nine zero, and we're there. 
Monday through Friday from 9 to 5 to answer any questions that you have. I'd love to show, have a tour of our organization. It's amazing. And we can just answer any questions that you have, and we take donations of all kinds. So nothing is too small and nothing is too big, and we'd love to hear from you. And look out for them on social media. I won't go through all the handles, yeah. but I'll link, yeah. I'll, I'll link them all. They have some great social media stuff. So, Teresa, thank you for being here. Thanks, don't go too far. We're going to have you back for our panel discussion in Absolutely. a few minutes. But And don't you go too far. We're going to be right back with Pebbles Franco.